from it because he's missed it because it's been there several times. Texas chose to kick in the first half, so they're going to get the football. This one's going to go out of the end zone. We're underway, second half. Let's get out on the field. Vince Welch, Vince. The amazing number is that the Aggies have outdistanced Texas 250 total yards to 181. That just does not happen. Now, in the end, if the scoreboard's the only thing that matters. And right now, Texas has the lead. They got the football. Back sack to start at the Aggies defense. Red Bryant, Jasper, Texas, 325-pound sophomore. That is the third sack today of Young by the Aggies. Take a look at those numbers. And uh, the time of possession, a little misleading because Texas is so good at scoring quickly in the red zone. But it's really staggering. If you're just tuning in, you had a late morning because you were sleeping off that turkey. Everybody in this building is shocked. Coming into this game, there had been only 11 sacks by the opposition against Texas. The Aggies have put three up today. That offensive line, not going to be happy with it. That's over the middle, completed up to the 25-yard line, and that's where AM is most vulnerable, dead last in 1A football in pass defense. That's that timing again, throwing mm -hmm. on rhythm, with rhythm. Vincent Young is so much better when he throws with rhythm. Even if it's second and long, there's still that chance for him. He occasionally will do okay when he's scrambling, but it's usually when he pulls down and just runs. He's tried to scramble a couple times and throw it, and he's been off the mark. If, if they could, if Greg Davis can get protection, and that's the key. They haven't gotten very good protection today against that front from a &M. This is going to be... A third down and a five. Third down and five. Big play for the Aggie defense again and again. The rush and a football. And it's recovered by the Aggies. Red Bryant put the hit on. And it just came out of your mouth that they have not done a good job of protecting Vincent Young in the pocket, and it came at a breakdown again right up the middle. And Red Ryan just goes right inside, and it looked like, well, the center, remember, we lost the center. Senline went out, and I believe that was Will Allen in there expecting, excuse me, that was Senline expecting to get help to the backside, and Bryant, who's so much quicker than you would think at 325 pounds, just finishes it. Wow. What a big chance now. After the recovery by Jason Jack, tremendous field position for the Aggies. A first down and 10 at the 15-yard line of Texas. Stephen McGee making the start for Reggie McNeil, who could not play today. McGee's carried well. He does so again and gets ladled at the 11-yard line. He got pancaked. Michael Griffin again moved up on the hit. And you see his... Oh, there he is. Boy, look at that, and listen to this crowd reacting. That's exactly what the coaches and the players were talking about, Craig. You heard them talking about how important this guy is, just gets right up in somebody's face. Let me tell you what I heard was I heard some of this. I'm not sure he didn't go a little goofy there for half a second. He's yeah. looking out his ear hole. And he still turned to them and said, go ahead, do it again. <laughs> Mercy. A second down and six. Inside that red zone now for the Aggies. The 360 option spin. He's got a carry to the five. today point after and it is a big point after they've already missed one they missed a two-point conversion this point after is for the lead it is up and it is good so to start the second half the third turnover by Texas results in the touchdown run of Stephen McGee and a one-point lead for the Aggies the other sideline, a surprise, but ready to go. Quarterback looking for a Heisman when he came in, now looking for a win. Vince Young. One point lead, second time that AM has had the lead in this game. 
That kick will be in the end zone into the back of it. That's where it will be down. Let's take a look at how it came about. Well, there was against Texas. They've had three turnovers in this game. Now they got to go back to work. Vince Young in there at quarterback, 20 yard line, first and 10 for the Longhorns who trail by one. On the fake, looking deep over the middle. There's the yeah. penalty. Yeah. Not much Got question about that. Mm -hmm. At the 40 yard line, Jackson Appel just bumped him about three yards before the ball got there. Very good throw, and again, it's on time. And, and, and earlier, Appel came through David Thomas, Thomas yeah. and, and, and had the interception on the deflection, and it was not called pass interference, and this time they did throw the flag on him. Pass interference, defense number 19. 15-yard penalty, first down. It, it's hard to put into words how important Jackson Appel is to this defense. I mean, here's a guy who has had wrist surgery, elbow surgery, hand surgery. He's playing with broken ribs. They're dislodged, too. It's not a crack. There's actually a moving rib in there. Could not breathe. They were worried about his win, getting ready for this game. Could not play against Oklahoma. And it didn't matter. He was going to show up on senior day and play his last one at Kyle Field. That's going to bring it up. A first down and a 10 now. Longhorn, you see their interior line pointing out the assignments here as the Aggies move around. Vince Young out of the shotgun, looking to the far side. Flats completed and uh, taken down at the 42-yard line after a gain of seven. Swede on the catch. Regarding Jackson Appel, his coach had this to say. Keep him out of this game. Uh, we may have to drag him out, prop him up, but he'll get up and play the next play. And boy, is he leading one fired up Aggie defense right now. There'll be no gain on that one as they spread it out and he was in it again. And, and you know what? The Aggie defense has to really maintain focus on discipline. Yes. You can't fall asleep. Not with Vince Young. Because they will do something, play action or some kind of reverse pass, and if you over pursue, Greg Davis has got to take advantage of the fact that there is some momentum right now for A&M. Third down conversion. Another big one coming up here. Five for eight for the Longhorns of Texas in this football game. They've got a third down and four here from their own 41-yard line. Young looking on the flats. A lot of bumping. That ball's caught and a tough catch for a first down and about a yard more. Swede had to fight off the defender. He ends up with a six-yard gain. And Lima Swede is a young man with a ton of ability. Of course, he chose to wear the number four. And whenever you do that after the career that Roy Williams had, you better be a pretty good player. I kind of like the no call. They're both doing a little right, hand battle. I don't, I don't mind that, and that's Danny Gore. But, but it was the catch against Ohio State yes. that made him believe in himself a little more and made Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, start trusting him a little bit. You talk to coaches that watch and follow and play against the Longhorns. The difference in this team this year is that their receivers now go get the ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he fought for that one. Got it on that one. Three for 32 yards. It'll be a first down and a 10. Still in Longhorn territory. Young in the fake. Young looking over the middle. Lost one, and that's going to be incomplete. And I'll tell you something right now. This is not Vince Young's game. No. This is not one of the better games he's played. He's struggling in passing the football, and he's struggling finding some room getting out of the pocket. And this is why both Craig and I, who had the opportunity to go play in the NFL, think that he's making the right decision. Came out, said I'm coming back. That throw right there. He's got to make that throw. He's got to be more consistent with throws like that. They'll put two receivers to the left side. A second down and a 10. Leaving only one back there. They've got the blitz on. Linebackers, cornerbacks coming. He read it out to the 50, one on one. And not enough for a first down. It'll be into Aggie territory. 46 yard line, a seven yard gain. David Thomas, the tight end. Texas coaches say that when it's a big play that's needed, you don't necessarily look at the book and look for what play to call. You think about players who make big plays. In the comfort zone right now, Young not accurate. Find his guy, David Thomas. And they came in together. Even though Thomas is senior, he didn't redshirt. And so they've been working four years. There's just a huge comfort zone there. I'd be really careful here. A&M better be ready for something coming around the edge. They've got uh, Melton and Ahmad Hall who caught a touchdown pass earlier. Hall's number 46 has come in there. The handoff to Melton going for a first down. Second effort may have gotten it. May have. It will depend on the spot here as to whether or not he got the first down. 
Melton is a short yardage man, that big 270 pound freshman, true freshman who comes in to run and he's going to be shy by a yard. He'll go for it. Woo. No question in my mind that Matt really? Brown will go for it. He didn't want it, too much momentum. You know, when you look at the penetration, how do you stop a big fella? Up front, up front, you got to get penetration in the backfield, and that's what slows down 275 pounds. I'm a little shocked right here. I, I, but you see, Ed, I think I, I mean I would want to give the ball to the Aggies in the field right now. You got to hope you're great deep. Come out, maybe try to get him to jump off sides or something. Though no, you could do that on a with your formation. Let's see what they do. It's a trick punt first down. They snapped it short and a flag down as well. Ball brought up to the 38-yard line on the short snap. They had the punter McGee in, but they had Rashid Bobibo in, and he took that ball and. Now we got to see what the flag was here. May have been a face mask mm -hmm. on the tackle. I love the Personal call. Personal foul, face mask. Oh, 15 that's yards humongous. to the kill on the defense. First down. Uh, Fresh penalties are costing mm -hmm. the Aggies in this game. I see. I see your point of view, and, and I think it's valid. But I think this is the right call. Good job by the kicker McGee. You know what? It's a statement by Mac Brown saying we're going to go try to win a win national it. championship. Absolutely. He's, he's not playing just for a rivalry game here. Let me tell you something. Mac Brown of last year and the year before probably kicks it. This is the new and improved, his own words, more comfortable in his own skin, making that call that I think is the right call, very aggressive call. And then another 15 tacked on with the face mask call. So for Texas, a first down as they are at the 24-yard line of the Aggies. Young, plenty of time, sidearms it, caught at the 15-yard line, stretching, trying to get a first down, but I don't think so, Cosby. Juan Crosby, the freshman taken down by Gore, it'll be a nine-yard game. You know, when I was in the NFL, there, there was a lot of talk in locker rooms about, you know, there are certain coaches that they can win a Super Bowl and there are certain coaches who can't because you knew they'd always coach not to lose instead of to win. Matt Brown is now coaching to win. This is a different man than he was the last couple of years. It has everything to do with the Rose Bowl that they won, finally beating Oklahoma and getting a 10-year contract. This man can be the coach as long as he wants to be at Texas. He's coaching differently this year. He is the ultimate, the perfect CEO mm -hmm. for a football program. I mean, he, he should go on tour for a lot of these schools and show them how do you do it, how you do it. You recruit and you have the facilities and you, and then on the month of November, his record is, is ridiculous. Staggering. Yeah, it's staggering. He has a team right now that has won 17 in a row, second only to a former Texas team that had 30 consecutive. They've won 13 road games in a row, and they have won the last five games played against Texas A&M. And when you think of how great they've been in November, listen, this is at the end of the season against Big 12 competition. So it's, it's, even, it's even more impressive when you think of the competition they've done it against. A second down, only a yard to go for the first down. Again, they bring the big backs in, carry to the 15-10. That will be the first down. Taken down at the 7 is Taylor. Taylor taken down by Melvin Bullitt. That will bring up a first down and goal after a gain of 7. Keep in mind that this offense you're looking at of Texas has averaged 50 points a game, number one in Division I football, second in rushing, 36th in passing. The Aggie defense has risen to the occasion, but there's a long way to go. And they look tired up front. Their guys are kind of a little sluggish right now. But Carl Torbush, I mean, if you want some pressure, you start thinking maybe pass here. Uh, first and goal with long yardage, you might need to bring a blitz. Vince Young on the handoff to the five, and touchdown! There won't be time to regroup. Taylor takes it in, an eight-yard run for the TD. Good block by uh, Will Allen up front, and the Longhorns are back on top. And that's what a running play looks like against a tired defensive line. Just nobody coming off nope, the block. Nah, they're nobody just, from they're the just inside. Just nobody comes off the blocks, and you see the great execution up front. Big turnout blocks. Everybody's on maroon jerseys. Nobody comes off. You know, both sides have gotten great blocks from fullbacks today. You know, you never talk about those guys because it's going to be about the guys with the ball in their hands. But the offensive lines have done it, especially for Texas, when they picked up their assignment, doing a good job sustaining their blocks. Taylor today both rushing. The point after is up, and it is good. And we go back and forth. So for Texas, the lead is theirs again, but it is an odd-numbered lead, 28-22 in the third. Should great to have you with us. Two touchdowns for Taylor. He scored three against Baylor this year in a ball game. He rushed for 105. He's starting to move up into that category again today. 
And he puts them back on top. And now the Aggies will get the football back. And uh, what we've been talking about here, Ed and Craig, uh, they need to keep that football a little bit and give that D a chance to recover over there on the sideline. That ball will be taken at the nine. Carter's got it. Carter, 20, trying to turn to the outside. He hangs on to a 25-yard line. How tough is it to play against a potential Heisman winner in Vince, of course. I don't want him coming after me up here in the <laughs> Correct that well, His one. parents just got angry. That's right. He's a Longhorn and proud of it. And he's had a great game and a great season. Not that handoff. Texas charging in on that one. There'll be a loss there depending on the spot of the ball. And that was a key. That was, that was an answer drive by Texas. They were down. The momentum was clearly on the side of AM. I love the call, the fake field goal or fake punt call by, by Coach Brown. And uh, but that's the that's the, 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 the X factor that Vince Young brings to, to the table for this Longhorn team. That 10 play drive, like you said, Gary, now they've got the Aggies have to stay out there for a while because the defensive mm -hmm. line oh, they got the Aggies, worn out. they're worn out. They've mm -hmm. got to have a break. They'll work out of the shotgun here, second down and the eleven. The option play going nowhere this time at the 20-yard line. He gets stood up by everybody. Ocam moved in to lead the charge right there for the Texas defense. Well, I remind you, if you see a great... The Aggies have to make the adjustment. The Longhorns came out on first down, and they bunched the line of scrimmage. They're, got, they're determined now to stop the option. Mm -hmm. So the Aggies have to see it. they got to have some kind of way of checking at the line of scrimmage and getting out and taking advantage of a one-on-one one outside. nice inside play action. Suck everybody up and go over the top. McGee is 5 for 16, uh, passing today with an interception. Three receivers set to that wide side. Four down linemen for the Longhorns. They are not going to rush it, but from the corners get good pressure. The carry will be up to the 20-yard line. Cornerbacks come up, and boy, it was a big shoulder hit right there. He felt that one. Stephen McGee, he's taken a couple of shots here in the second half. Well, that was a quarterback draw. If it was third and 20 or 25, I could see that for field position. But at some point, you've got to take the wrapping off your new quarterback. I, to me, you've, you've got to let him try to throw a couple down the field. They're, they're a little too protective in that situation. Mac Brown went for it with a fake punt. You've got Mac to match Brown's it. 22 and 3 in November. You've got to match it. You can't come out and, 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 and have three plays in and out. Yep. Now the kick by Brantley averaged 38 yards on three kicks in the first half. Big rush, Texas, and a good one. It is blocked. It's at the 10, picked up to the 5, into the end zone. Cedric Griffin, a 10-yard return after Michael Griffin put the block on. And this is that swinging gate. They're just going to come up there and blast it. So it's the Griffin to Griffin connection, but this time it works. And it actually wasn't even the swinging gate that got it. Griffin just uses his high school running back speed to come off the edge and get the block. That's the fifth career block for Michael Griffin. That's a new Texas record. I think you just give the ability for them to outnumber you. And that's exactly what they did. They, did. they outnumbered yep. Make them go the long route. That time Griffin could come straight, off, straight in. A very quick TD. That one off the goalpost. Boy, what a time we've had with point after. Since that one ends up going wide, they do not get that, but they got the TD. So they block the punt, and Griffin returns it for the touchdown, and Texas is up 34-22 over the Aggies. A 34-22 lead, Michael Griffin, block punt, 10 yards, takes it in, touchdown. That's your big help special teams. There are the numbers, block kicks since 2000. Well, everybody always talks about Virginia Tech, but it's been Texas recently. You know what that's a result of? Having so many great football players <laughs> yes, on your sir. team that you're putting superstars out there, 11 men, in, in special teams. Look at the gaps and look at Griffin come in completely unblocked because everybody's bunched in the middle. What a fake punt. If you're going to give up that much momentum coming your way, dink a ball right over the middle to somebody and let them run with a football. Or how about you just bring everybody in, you block it. do it the right way. Bear Bryant, when he coached here, you think he'd have done that swing and let them in deal? No. I don't, listen, I don't mind forward thinking and changing things up, but I've, I'm with you, Craig. I've watched that develop over the last couple years, and I, and I just think 
and I just think it's some, one of those things that they all see it on film and say, well, we should try that. Kickoff is out of bounds, 17-yard line or so, back of the 15, I guess, where they'll take over. Let's get out of Vince Welch. Vince. Let's course here. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, might <laughs> yeah. Wanna, you might scored 100 percent on your test. You get an F. <laughs> might want to come undercover on that one. <laughs> and by the way, Texas has set a new scoring record for the Longhorns. His three 535 points have been scored on the season now by this Texas team, and they've got the lead. Now the Aggies got to go to work here. McGee at quarterback. He'll carry this time. Good block. Turn him inside, and they'll get five as he takes it up to the 40-yard line. He is there, number one rusher, 90 yards in the game. You know, you were just talking about the depth of the program that helps your special teams. Michael Griffin, he didn't even play defense in high school. He's right out of Austin, uh, Texas, out of Bowie High School. And w right when he got there, he knew. He said, listen, I I'm going to be behind Selvin Young. I'm going to be behind Cedric Benson. They said, we're going to move you to safety. So you take a great high school running back, a great athlete, put him at free safety, and then he becomes a special teams terror. That, that is the depth you were talking about, Frank. They just got it everywhere. Second down at five, see if they want to put it up in the air. He's not done a lot of that today. Five out of 16 in the passing department. The handoff straight ahead at this time, and the second effort gets the first down. 40, 35, and a great run. Inside the 30, Javorski Lane, who has thrown a touchdown pass on an option play. He gains 30 on the rush. It all starts with the adjustment of the formation. They've had eight in the box in the last series, and the Longhorns dominated them, made them punt the football. This time they come out, they go three wide receivers to the right, right out here, so that gives you your seven really was inside. Yeah, you pull them out, and that's the one thing that Gene Chizik was talking about that Les Canning is a master of. They will run the same plays you see all year, but they'll run them out of different formations every time you play them. And there's been a couple of times, uh, go back to the Oklahoma game in this game, where the defense is just a little confused at what they're going to see. First down and 10, looking in the flats, wide open. That's caught at the 25-yard line. Won't be enough for a first down. That is Leone. He scored a touchdown. Courtney Lewis, the leading rusher for a &M, was injured early in this football game. So Javorski Lane and Brandon Leone have had to come on and share the duties. And it's hard to put in perspective how much of a loss Courtney Lewis is. He is a former team. He was a teammate of Vince Young's at Madison High School outside of Houston. Can you imagine that backfield? Wow. Because Courtney Lewis... Explosion wise, I don't know about I don't know about long distance speed, but in that five and ten yard area where he's got to turn the corner on the option, there's nobody on the field as fast as he is. So McGee's had to carry the football a lot on that option play, turning it back inside, and still successful, even though Texas knows that's what has to happen. Here he goes again. This time the pitch, trying to get to the first down, and he does. What a great second effort to get the first down. Leone again on the carry and a five-yard gain. And you know what? The blocking on the outside by the wide receiver, Daquan Mobley, was awesome. And, and now the running back position has changed up so that the, the big hands and the speed has to come from Leone. Yep. And, and it's been all day. We've been saying, where's the safety on the pitch man? Where's the safety on the quarterback? And it's not just been Mobley downfield. We've seen Martellus Bennett. We've seen the fullback, Chris Alexander. They have really sustained their blocks downfield and done an excellent job. Amazing rushing numbers, 208 for AM rushing in 37 attempts against this Texas defense. That end, they have the first down to the 10, inside the 5. Javorski oh. Lane drags along some linebackers and picks up a couple of cornerbacks for a 16-yard gain. You know who's licking his chops right now? <laughs> Pete Carroll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So may, may have found a little bit of a weakness. Look up front, though. Now, here's the smartness here. Javorski Lane, he's the big guy, right? So you take the power and you run right downhill at him. And it took him a little while to make that adjustment. They were still trying to go with that stress, stretch option when Courtney Lewis left. Now they've got Leone and Javorski Lane, who are different runners than Courtney Lewis. And now they're pounding it at him. Leone a little faster so they can still use him a bit to the outside. Kirk Elder with tremendous blocking in there as he took a Loki right out of the play. First down and goal. Aggies trying to respawn, and not this time. They're going to be a loss on that one as, again, they try and go to Lane, their short yardage carrier, who has nine rushing TDs coming into this game. Killebrew on the hit. I've got two words for you. Martellus, Bennett. Amen. But you know what I did, Ed? I watched the corner, and he stayed at home last time. Yeah. Number eight stayed at home. He didn't run out of there. Griffin was smart. And I watched, as soon as Bennett blocked down, he stayed there. Well, and, and he better stay there because I've seen them run that bunch formation 
where Bennett will be up there and there'll be two guys in front of him and he'll Peter 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 and then go right back out to that corner at six foot seven. Well, there he is right down here. Second Bennett. down and goal. Back now at the four yard line. They keep it close. It's student body left, student body right. There's nobody in the end zone. Touchdown! Did he cross it? No! No! One yard line. Stephen McGee reached, trying to put it into the end zone, but did not get the ball over the plane. Gary, Good job by Larry Dibbles. You got my calf sore over here. <laughs> I'm up on my toes. That's what we like. Yep. We want you excited after Thanksgiving. We wanted to welcome you. You know, McGee, the other day I was, I was razzing him about his 40 time. I said, well, you're no Reggie McNeil. And he was so proud that he has consistently run. Woo. Man, man. I, he, he stayed in bounds. They can look at that. Oh, upstairs. it looked like his, his foot. His yeah, foot. yeah that's, that's the right call. Right that's foot. the right call. Right there. Well, but, but you Ooh, know what? The ball already there. No, the ball I don't think it was. Bang, I don't bang. think it was. Stop it right when his right foot. They're going to review, they're gonna review it. Watch his right foot right. Keep going there. He's down. He's down, but I think they're going to change the spot of that the ball. Goes. I think they'll put the spot of the ball on about the two-inch line. Yeah, three. Something like that. Boy, that was close, wasn't it? <laughs> I, I bet you two. Two. <laughs> I go with three. Got the replay upstairs. Through the 70 games played, there have been 88 plays reviewed. 28 plays have been overturned, 32%. And a lot of big plays overturned here mm -hmm. in the last couple of weeks. And this is one of those big plays. But that's the key for me. On these reviews, the Pretty officials quick. in the Big 12 have been under a lot of pressure recently from Texas Tech, Oklahoma, and trying to get it right. But go in there, look at your tape, make a decision. Yeah. Well, and, and there were some people, including, of course, Bob Stoops, who in last week's game against Texas Tech thought they should have taken longer to see if Torrey and Henderson did score the winning touchdown. But the answer back to that was, well, Joel Falani had scored earlier and dropped the ball, and they got that one right. So I, I don't know about you, Craig. I'm a proponent of this. I, I think it's... I love instant review. Yeah, I do. Great. I just want to make... I, the guys who go in there in every other play, they're trying to do a review of it. I, I'm against that. No, no. Only do... After a video review, the ball will be played 18 inches from the goal line. No way. Third down. No, it's three. Oh, they wow. missed by 15 inches. 18 inches. Gee, man. I'll tell you, that's a replay with some specificity to it. <laughs> I went with 36 inches, and they go 18. Yeah. I, close to 24 inches. To me, it took too long, though, to just figure out 18 inches. That's if where, that's where are they marking it? Where his foot is? Hey, it's deer season, and bow hunters <laughs> have that precision, but it's on <laughs> electronics. <laughs> All right, a third down and goal. An enormous series here for the Aggies as they are trailing 34-22. You see 216 left to go here in the third. A long delay. If anybody benefits from a long delay, it's the Aggies defense at front four. Well, <laughs> and, and, and remember, any kind of penetration, you cannot have one white shirt to blow this play up. I think you need to do something into the line of scrimmage and leave it in the quarterback's hands. McGee's got a couple in that uh, modified eye. Well, They're confused. Come on, what are we running? They go straight. No, it's going to be kept. He's going to try for the corner. McGee, touchdown! <laughs> A one-yard run. It is his second TD. And regardless of the outcome of this game, this young man is writing an amazing opening start script. An excellent call by Les Caney. You knew, you knew Texas was going to sell out into every gap. And how about the presence of mind to get his big tight end, Boone Stutz, in the right place? <laughs> yeah. You know, and he's got the plate clock, and he's got all this and that. And Come then on, he dude. The you're, you're a senior. I'm a freshman. I'm yeah. telling you where to go. Big extra point. Pegram out there puts that one up. With all the problems we've had with the extra points, you hold your breath now if you're on the sidelines. So A&M is right back in it, 34-29 Texas lead by this team that everybody in this conference wrote off. And that terrible pass defense has held Vincent Young down to, what, 128 yards? One of the best defensive games played against Young by the worst passing defense in the nation. Another big kick is going to go into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20-yard line for a first and 10, and Young will come back out. Coming up, more great football. We're going to take you to Boulder, Colorado. They've got a chance. has had 11 for 19 and 128 yards passing an interception. What's amazing is that he has not run the football but eight times. Hand off to the 20, turning 25. Look out. 
Down to the 35-40 and out of bounds. That's Taylor. Taylor's having himself a big day. 23-yard gain. He's already got two touchdowns. You cannot coach speed, can you? <laughs> and, and speed, I don't know. You tell me. Reggie, Reggie, you, know. you tell me, Craig. I always try to start from the block <laughs> when they were slanting downhill. <laughs> but but Ramos Taylor, Reggie Bush, there's some players in the country just have a different gear. Yep. And he's one of them. And they, and they have found ways. They put him at receiver, but they'd always give him the ball in different ways. And well, he, he's just one of those guys that's become a utility person for Texas. And to have that much speed at a utility player is fantastic. Texas is trying to rush it. They didn't get it off as quick as they wanted that time. Young is back. They want to burn the ski right now, but they think they got him down. Up to midfield on the reception and more to the 40, 35, and deep into Aggie territory. Am at all? Only one reception prior to the day. He's caught one for a touchdown. He gets another at a 25-yard gain. The BCS standings that'll determine the team. Actually, so should they win out through I the agree. SEC championship game. That one up the middle's going nowhere. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. You see some weary bodies down there. It is not that hot here today. But uh, the interior linemen, especially defensively, they are struggling. Selvin Young, who hasn't played much, that's a fresh set of legs in there on that carry. Selvin Young, who's been battling an ankle injury. They had the two weeks off. He's almost 100%, but he's not quite there. So if you've got a guy like Ramon Taylor, just let him continue to carry the rock. A second down and nine. Look at the yardage. Second half, Texas, but not much of an advantage. And on the game, A&M. But Texas has the all-important lead in the final minute here of the third quarter. And they're moving the football again. And at too much time, timeout taken. They were going to have that clock run down on them. So Texas had to use a timeout. First they have used here in the second half as Mac 12 out of 20 in the air. One interception, 153 passing yards in this game. He's got a second down and nine in Aggie territory at the 31-yard line. He'll run the option. The pitch to the 30, down to the 25 and the 24-yard line. Taylor again. Taylor on the carry. We haven't seen that play run a lot today. They get seven on that one. But you notice that the Aggies, they definitely want to get the ball out of Vincent Young's hands. 43 comes in and smacks Young, and, and that's exactly what he needs to do. And, but it was the lead block of Ahmad Hall, who's having a, a great game at fullback. He goes up to the safety, who's supposed to come down the pitch, just knocks his pegs out, and Ramon Taylor runs right by the block. Big third down play right here. Six out of ten third down conversions in this game. For the Texas Longhorns, they're in Aggie territory. The Aggie defense trying to stand up to this onslaught. They get a great rush, and they get the play. Brought down at the 25-yard line. A yard loss on that as Taylor had nowhere to go. Big-time rush put on by Michael Bennett. Straight ahead. It, uh, yeah. Stay the course. Go. You know, this dancing around, it, it works, and you have some flash and dash once in a while, but, man, you got to stay the course and stay where it's supposed to be. Well, we are going to go to the fourth quarter. This a lot of shuffling going on here as we start the fourth quarter. Count them up, David Pino, and make sure you get the right numbers out there. For the last eight games, he has taken over as their kicker. He's 10 for 11 in field goals that are under 50 yards. He's going to try one here that's a 41-yarder. Third in the Big 12 in that department. Pino for Texas, the... Aggies defense held him from the TD. There's the kick to start the fourth. It is up, and uh, it is good. So Pino puts it through. Mac Brown applauding because that's going to extend the lead. 37 to 29, and that's a big kick here to start the fourth. So Texas looking to remain undefeated. Extends that lead 37-29. A&M has to respond again. After that field goal extending the Texas lead, you look at their starting quarterback, Vince Young, you would not know his club was in the lead. He's, he's been long in the face for the entire second half, and Craig, we've been around this program all week. Everybody, including the coaches, looked at him. He, he's got to pick it up. It's going to be the Aggies getting the football. It'll be taken by Carter to the 10-15. Trying to turn it to the outside. Can't get there. Gets to the 18-yard line. The Aggies will take over. Touchdowns, one of 11, and that one you saw of a one-yard run. Now the Aggies back on it. They got to get a couple of scores up on the board here. They go straight ahead up the middle. Not a lot of running room right there as Lane is taken down by Robeson. Well, all that uh, Texas A&M talked about this week, as far as the games were concerned, was getting to the fourth 
and being able to be in it. So, gentlemen, they've gotten that far. They've gotten to the fourth quarter, and that right now Texas has to make a play here and there to really take the life and the hope out of the Aggies. And Vince Young, even though he's not on the field right now, he permeates the entire emotional structure of this team. He, he's got to get off that bench. He's sitting over there. He's not. He's licking some wounds. He's not feeling good about his performance. He, he's got to forget about all of his individual stuff. This is about the team right now and about getting to the championship game at the Rose Bowl. The Aggies have 326 yards against Texas that averages 278 against them and we're in the fourth quarter. And that's the biggest reason. Flag down on the far side. It's been the work of Stephen McGee who continues to be their primary ground gamer. He's uh, closing in now on a 100